in Ireland. So let's have a big hand for John A. Brennan. Especially under the circumstances, you know, we're survivors, and just keep in your thoughts the poor unfortunates that lost everything. I know exactly how they feel. So anyway, uh, Doreen was talking about. She said you always had to have the love in it, right? You know, in your poetry, you have to. Uh, <clears throat> so. On that note, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and recite William Butler Yeats. That's probably sacrilege for me to try and do, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, it's called the Song of Wandering Angus. Uh, Ed Lures is not here tonight to bail me out. So I'm screwed. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have started at all. Anyway, I'll give it a go. Uh, I went down to what was it? Anybody remember the woods? The no. All right, I'll tell you what. Come back to me. I'll read this one first. It's still on the subject of love, so you know. I mean, what, what can I tell you? She could have come in through the bathroom window. It was open, but not her. Her proud carriage and her dignified mien dictated otherwise. She came straight in through the front door, bearing her laurel leaf of eucalyptus. For you, she said, because I love you. A glowing aura surrounded her face and her eyes shone with an intensity usually reserved for poetry and writing her passions. You can't always get what you want, she said. I said, I don't want much. And if you try, sometimes you'll find you get what you need, baby. She turned and offered me her coat. And Joe Cocker, with the tortured, haunted soul, sang, It Feels Like Forever. That's our song, she said. And so it began. From the start, I told her to watch for the signs, to pay attention. I will, she said, as she traced her initials on the dust that lay on the surface of the side table. This is a powerful time in our lives, I said, as we kissed. And then I inhaled her breath. And I still can't remember W. Butler <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I went down to the Hazelwood because a fire was in my head. I cut and peeled the hazel one and I tied a berry to a thread. And when night moths were on the wing, and when the stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in the stream, and I caught the little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, and went to fan the fire aflame, I heard a rustling by the door, and someone called me by my name. It had become a shimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded in the glimmer of the air. And now I am old with wanderings through hollow lands and hilly lands but I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and hold her hand and walk among long dotted grass and pluck till the times and the tides are done. The golden apple, the silver apples of the moon.
and the golden apples of the sun. Thank you. That was that was really good for you. All right. So anyway, I want to read this one back when I call it. Oh, to return to that time and place and space of yesterday's papers. When I was young and undaunted and sure of nothing. Stronger than an oak, spellbound. When all that mattered was getting satisfaction and paying dearly for the free love and the freer lovers. Cocker sang about too many lovers and not enough love. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for nothing. What did he know with his tortured soul flailing and stirred bare as the tree in winter? Back when I was jumping Jack Flash and not just in the pan. Strutting and swaggering, being me and Jagger. No one was going to make a saint out of me, that was sir. Back when the girls dropped at my feet, but I only wanted one. And needed only one. Back when war was ever present, the ever present companion, and the FBI and the CIA, and the IRA and the BBC, and the fingerprints files crowded and smothered the senses. Back when Bobby starved to death in Long Kesh camp and Doherty escaped to the sanctuary of Manhattan and the Carlo East. When Fergal was shot to death on a Sunday morning and the blood flowed down the streets of my town, crimson and then congealed. The street fighting men on fire. The fighting ten from Cross Midland. And bloody Sunday and Derry, 13 their number, gone. In Armagh, the women caged, violated, invaded and defiled. But still the music saved me and shielded me, seeking sympathy from the devil. Back when I had the love, but ruined it again and again and again. Naive, not knowing. Unsure and ignorant. Leaving them all at the stations. The suitcases stacked. Watching the red lights behind fade in the night. Still always looking for the one who could save my soul, body, and mind. The other half, the alter ego. Back when I was too often the altered ego tripper, getting the kicks on Route 66, and Carlos Castaneda, and Don Juan the Holy Man, flying with the crow around the four corners, free. Arizona, New Mexico, Chaco, the sacred canyon, looking for the Anazazi, the lost souls, the blackbird with the severe eyes, the messenger, catching the lizard in the southwest, the cactus needle sewing the eyes, looking, seeking what was right there under my nose. Body and soul sundered and wasted. And always Plato drilling me, showing me, guiding me, pushing me. But I, in my throes, always knew better. And blindly rushed headlong, frantic, toward my blurred, unreachable horizon. Not knowing then that you cannot always get with the mentality of the lemming, breaking on through to the other side. A savage savant, 
heedless, arrogant and lost. Courting the stray cats, the blues and the honky-tonk women and ignoring Leonard. What the fuck did Cohen know about love and suffering and pain and heartache anyway with his burning violin bullshit? Jimmy Burning the Strat, that was my man. The highway child. The voodoo man in the voodoo lounge. Merciless and mercifully dead before his time. And Jim, lighting the fire. And Brian, drowning in his supplication. And John, imagining that all you need is love. and biting the bullet instead. And Janice, the shining pearl, dulled by her own private crucifixion, all dust in the wind now, crying, beseeching. But always St. Michael, and always Jesus, watching, protecting, and suffering alongside. Crossing oceans, ever seeking, always finding myself at the crossroads, puzzled, stupefied, and bewildered. And I'm still standing there, waiting. 